Hi everybody, this is Anne. Whether it's the holiday season, a birthday, a wedding, or just an occasion for a special thank you, we potters are always on the lookout for that special gift that we can hand make so the recipient will appreciate and proudly use it. In this video, I'll show you one of my favorite things to make that has proved very popular sellers at craft fairs and which will be a huge hit for the person receiving it. It's a double-walled bun pan. I started by wedging a little over two pounds of clay. I wanted to use more than I needed as I'll need to trim the bottom later. I always smooth and compress the bottom of my clay mound beforehand to get rid of any pockets of air. I slammed down the clay to the bat and began patting it on the sides to stick it down to the bat surface. To begin centering the clay, I wet my hands and began to push down on the top of the mound with the palm of my right hand while supporting it with my left. I have a whole separate video for centering. Check it out at the link above. I re-wet my hands and coned the clay up between them to condition it. I pushed the cone back down so the clay was centered. I needed the clay to form a donut, so I continued to push the center downward with the palm of my right hand. As the clay became dry, I added more water to avoid the friction. My goal was to have a hollow center, so I cleaned away the remaining clay from the floor with my fingers and then a sponge. In preparation for the next step, I flattened the top of the donut with my fingers. I wanted to form an inner wall and an outer wall, so I created a ridge with my fingers separating the inner quarter of clay from the outer three quarters of clay. As I dug my fingers down farther, the clay became more difficult to move. I used a damp sponge to assist me with this, making sure to leave almost a half inch of clay along the bottom. I began to pull up the center wall. I had a large bulk of clay along the top rim, so I had to be careful not to thin out the wall beneath it too much. Instead, I thinned the clay along the rim so the wall depth was consistent throughout. That took care of the depth, but the top was still wanting to flare outwards, so I needed to cone it inward. I used a six-pointed finger technique to decrease the rim diameter. Then I was able to pull the clay upward into that cone shape. Why the bunch shape works so well for baking is that when the inner cone heats up, it helps the dense cake ingredients cook more evenly. I used my red rubber rib to compress and clean up the wall. I cut off the top with my needle tool and rounded off the top with my fingers. I moved on to the outer wall. 
I used my wet sponge to push the clay from the bottom upward. I then continued to pull the clay upwards, making sure I didn't thin out the wall too much, especially at the rim. I repeated this step to make another pull. Notice how I pull the clay up and outward this time. I made one more slow pull all the way to the top, intentionally pushing the rim outward to help avoid warping. I used my red rib to push the clay outward to increase the width of the belly of the piece. I then push down on the top of the rim to compress, widen, and strengthen it. I used my needle tool to even out the top of the rim. I again used my needle in a downward angle to even up and clean each side of the rim. I rounded off the rim to make it comfortable to lift with my fingers. I cleaned up the floor with my fingers and a damp sponge. As I'll need a flat top to rest on the bat as I trim the bottom of the piece, I cut the inner wall rim flush with the outer wall and re-rounded it. Finally, I trimmed some of the clay away from the bat. Then, I used my finger to create indentations along the outer wall. I took the clay guards off from around the wheel. Then I used a wire to wire off the piece from the bat. I let that dry to leather hard. Now here's a piece I made previously where it's dried to leather hard. It's ready for trimming, so I placed it upside down on the bat and tapped it to center. I used lugs to secure it to the bat. I then used my large trim tool to round off the outer wall of the bunt. If you'd like some deeper insight into trimming, see the video link above. I then used the same tool to trim the inner wall so it mirrored the outer wall and I had a nice rounded surface.
I wanted to get rid of the sharper trim marks, so I used a moist sponge and dampened the clay, then I used a red rib to smooth it out. I then switched to my razor rib to put a really nice burnish on it. I couldn't get the metal rib to fit along the inner wall, so I sufficed to smooth it with my red rib. Here it is all trimmed up and ready for the next step. I let it dry completely, bisque fired it, and then glazed it with opulence calico glaze. And here's the final piece. Now here's a great sales tip. Print out a recipe card for monkey bread and include it with your bunt pan. If you liked our video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to support our channel and become part of the team, click the super thanks or the buy me a coffee button. See you next time in the studio.